Jamie Lucky are the officials. And just about ready to go between two of the top teams in the country. Baylor undefeated on the year, 12-0, 5-0 in league play. Kansas 10-3 overall, 4-2 in league play. Their last game was a week ago, a loss in Stillwater. And starting out the game, switching in their man-to-man. -man. You get caught underneath, and Jared Butler just drills it. Ochai Abaji got caught underneath that screen, didn't go over the top. Nobody stepped up. Tonight's starting lineups are brought to you by K Jewelers. No surprises for Kansas. A great defender to Marcus Garrett at the point. Keep an eye on David McCormick, who has been playing some terrific basketball in his last three games for Baylor. Jay, it's been a model of consistency. The same, same starting five in every game for Baylor this year. And they're so good off the bench. This starting five is excellent, but when Scott Drew decides to go to his bench, he gets a lot of production and a good lift. About 35 points per game off the bench for Baylor this year. The Bears have won every game they've played by at least eight points this year. They have never trailed in a game by more than four at any point this season. Vital on the glass, thumb on the glass, and it's a great start for the Bears. Baylor is the best three-point shooting team in the Big 12, one of the best in the country. They don't miss many shots, but when they do, they get almost 40% of their misses as offensive rebounds. Can't guard that. Jalen Wilson misses the three for Kansas, and back come the Bears. Mitchell the kick, Teague the three, well short. And Wilson down with a rebound. There's that shot fake and sidestep. And Davion Mitchell, when he drives, he forces help. And then he can play drive and kick. Wilson on the drive. Off to McCormick. And he will lay it in. McCormick averaging better than 20 points per game in his last three. And coming off a 24-point, 12-rebound effort a week ago against Oklahoma State. That was a nice job by Jalen Wilson to slip that charge because Davion Mitchell was there to pick up maybe his 14th charge of the season. As you said, one of the very best defenders in the country, Davion Mitchell. T penetrates. Another shot fake. And the drive and the layup. And one for Jared Butler. It was almost like Kansas was surprised that after the shot fake and the flyby that Butler would attack. Look, everybody's just looking, and finally, David McCormack comes over late, but it was way too late. He's, if he, that late, you got to go up to block the shot, not try to jump in and somehow take a charge. So what a good start for Butler, who in Baylor's last game did not knock down a shot until the final five minutes of the game. And he knocked down a couple of big threes to help Baylor to victory. But generally speaking, he has been one of the best and most consistent players in the country. And he's consistent at both ends of the floor. He leads the Big 12 in steals. He's a terrific two-way player that's gotten better and better over his time at Baylor. The game of the weekend for Baylor, a 68-60 win in Lubbock. Another missed three, and back come the Bears in a real groove in the first three minutes of this game. Sharing the ball nicely. Butler with a brown on him. Baseline. Good cut by Vital Block. Bamba is fouled. And Baylor doing one of the things that Scott Drew loves, Jay. They are getting on the offensive glass. It's been one of the trademarks under Drew in recent years. Well, it's so difficult as you take a look at Scott Drew. It's amazing he's in his 18th season. He looks like he barely got his driver's license, by the way. He's so young. But it, it, when... Baylor gets you into rotation. That makes it even harder to get a block out. And you're having smaller guys have to rotate over to, to pick up Flo Famba or to pick up Mark Vidal, and they're going to have very little chance. Actually, Vidal got fouled that first one. They didn't call it. And then Famba got fouled on the, the second offensive rebound. And that is the second foul on David McCormick. And how big is that this early in the game for Kansas Jay? But the Jayhawks already struggling. Mitch Lightfoot, fifth-year senior, now comes into the game for Kansas. Well, especially the way he picked up his fouls. You know, Baylor, you think anybody who plays Kansas can try to put him in ball screens to make McCormick guard on the outside, see if they can pick up fouls that way. But those weren't the fouls he picked up. 
Uh, Baji having to work hard to try to shake his defender. Good hands by Vital. It'll stay with Kansas. Bill Self's biggest concern coming in playing a team like Baylor is can they score enough? Baylor number one in the country in defensive efficiency. And this is a very good Kansas team. But there are times, Jay, where they do struggle a little bit to put the ball in the basket. No question. It, it, scoring's been the issue. And they've got to start driving the ball and using their dribble more effectively. It was double team just on the inbounds. And somehow Lightfoot gets out of it. Wilson for three. And it's nothing but bears on the glass. Well, who is going to take that away from Mark Vidal? <laughs> Somebody much braver than you are. Oh, that's for sure. 6'5", 250. He is a load. Pass deflected out of bounds. It'll stay with Baylor. Now that ball screen was set by number 23, Jonathan Chamwa Chachua. And he he is such a good roller to the basket. He rolls so hard that he's going to take the defense and drag it with him. And that opens up so many things for his teammates. He's productive on his own. He's like eight, eight or nine points, seven rebounds a game off the bench. But his activity level is so impressive. Adam Flagler into the game for Baylor as well. The transfer from Presbyterian. <laughs> Up top, and Vital slams it home. He's off to a great start, and the Bears are dominating. And how did Flagler even see Vital through that double team? Must have seen him with his left eye alone. What a great pass. Abaji knocks down a three to stem the tide a little bit for Kansas. And he had pressure on that shot. Jared Butler was right with him. Mitchell draws a foul to take us to our first media timeout. A lot of great moments already in this game for Baylor, but none got the crowd quite as excited as that alley-oop from Flagler to Vital to bring them out of their seats. ESPN's exclusive presence really astounding. It is astounding on both ends of the floor, and just even in the Big 12, the, the categories in which Baylor leads the Big 12, scoring, field goal percentage, three-point percentage, three-point field goals made, they make 10 a game. You know, we said assists and steals, almost 10 a game. Turnover margin, seven a game, more than their opponents. They force 19 and a half turnovers. A wide open three for Jared Butler. Got it back off the inbounds, and it's 14 to five for Baylor. It's the execution that Baylor has after timeout on the out of bounds underneath. Their defense, look, everybody down in the stance. They communicate. They fake at the ball. They switch everything. They switch to take something away. They don't just switch to pick up a man. That pass nearly turned over. Garrett's got a scrap to try to hang on to it, and it'll be a held ball. And it was Garrett and three Baylor Bears on the ball. They just collapse to the ball. Everybody rallies to it. Here at the reigning Naismith Defensive Player of the Year from last season. As DeWan Harris checks into the game for Kansas now, Jalen Wilson will go out. Mark Vidal, who's off to a great start for Baylor tonight, he will sit down. Matthew Meyer has come into the game. And this is where, as you mentioned, they bring in Flagler. They bring in Chamwa Chachua. They bring in Meyer. There's no drop-off for the Bears. Gives them a, a little bit of a different vibe. I and mean, what a great switch by Chamwa Chachua. He just switched right out onto the ball, knocked it away, and all of a sudden, Baylor's going the other way. Chamwa Chachua, a guy who didn't really start playing basketball until about five years ago, spent a year at UNLV, transferred, redshirted last year, and now along with Meyer and Flagler providing outstanding production off the bench but and Jay talked about it already Chamo Chachua's numbers are good but he's better than his numbers he does so many things well that don't show up uh, in the box score for Baylor but helps them win games just that hard roll to the basket Marcus Garrett had to pick him up and leave Macy Oteague a corner shooter and Teague almost got a shot just from a hard roll from Chamo Chachua Mitchell no and Kansas down to the rebound and if you can find a big guy who runs the floor harder than Chamo Chachua, let us know because we haven't seen it. Aaron pass. T. Timeout, Kansas. Bill Self has seen enough in the first five and a half minutes here in Waco. But it was just a simple thing of Ochai Abadji just needs to throw the ball to his teammate when he's open right away and not wait 
because uh, that's why Mitch Lightfoot you know, went to cut, didn't get the ball initially. So you trust the passer. But that was a, that was one of those unforced errors. That when when your teammates open, give them the ball right away. But a nice pass into Lightfoot who slams it home. And one of the very few times you'll see Baylor get taken advantage of that after the timeout. Just a quick screen and roll to the basket by Mitch Lightfoot. Nobody picked him up. Lightfoot figures to get a heavy dose of minutes here in the first half. McCormick already on the bench with two. Kansas can also go smaller and play five out, which they've done quite frequently this year. And now a carry is called on Davion Mitchell. No Bryce Thompson tonight for Kansas. Broken bone in his right hand and out four to six weeks. Yeah, dove on a loose ball. He'd already had, he was playing with a cracked vertebra in his back, which bad enough, and he's out with a that finger injury. Just had surgery on it, had pins inserted. And he's a competitor. You could see where he broke his finger when he dove for that ball, and then he kept reaching for the ball. Christian Brown can't free himself from Matthew Meyer. Kansas having to work really hard just to get a decent look, and it's an offensive foul on Abaji. Nice job by Meyer coming over from the weak side. A little surprised Abaji couldn't get around him because he was standing straight up and down. His feet were almost touching. Yeah, just a little sidestep could have gotten around that. And again, Baylor number one in the country in defensive efficiency. They've allowed only 61 points per game. You know when you play the Bears, you're going to have to work extremely hard and be extremely crisp at the offensive end to have a good night. Baylor just ran a little cross-screen screen for the screener. And... Kansas switched everything. Baylor's going to have to look to, to slip some of these switches and try to get something going toward the basket. David McCormick, if you're just joining us, on the bench with a couple of early fouls. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis here in Waco. Number two, Baylor. Number nine, Kansas. And a foul on Jared Butler. With the crowd unhappy. There was a, a carry call, then a travel, and then a foul. Well, they had to cut as their first one. The referees know what the foul count is. <laughs> Five for Kansas, one for Baylor right now. Lob up top. Abaji is fouled. It'll be Flo Thamba called for the foul as he tried to break up the alley-oop attempt. Abaji's the guy that Kansas likes to throw over the top to. Anytime he's in the corner, you have to watch Lob. Abaji, the leading score on the season for Kansas at almost 15 points per game. They've got five players averaging between 9 and 15 points per game on the season. Hey, a good-looking Super Tuesday doubleheader on ESPN in the app tomorrow night. Tennessee is down in Gainesville. Number six volunteers taking on the Gators at 7 o'clock Eastern time. And then Duke and Pittsburgh facing off at the Peterson Event Center at 9 o'clock Eastern time. Tomorrow night on ESPN and the ESPN app. Pitt's a very interesting team right now. Came off a 20-point win over Syracuse on the weekend. They scored 64 points in the second half to beat the Orange 96 to 76. And their two games against Syracuse. How many offensive rebounds they have? Like 80. Somehow that goes in. I think Thamba will get credit for it. That's the one where the other team knocks it in. Bamba and Meyer both have to run down court with their arms up as if they did it to see if the score will give them credit. <laughs> Good cut by Abaji. Thamba bothered him on the reverse, but it's out of bounds back to Kansas. Boy, a lot of a lot of contact on that shot by Abaji. A little surprised that wasn't whistled. Wilson and McCormick return. So McCormick went out at about the 17 minute mark, so he sits for about five minutes and now comes back into the game with two fouls the basket by the way the last one down for baylor was credited to flow thamba yeah with mccormick coming back at some point you have to take a risk i mean with two fouls you don't want to keep you'll play the best defense on your guy if you keep him on the bench the whole half thamba called for the foul that's 
all that call is is two hands on the ball handler is an automatic call. It doesn't matter how much, you know, how much pressure you're putting on with those hands or, or whether, you know, the severity of the contact. You put two hands on them, they're calling it. That is just two hands on the ball handler. So Thamba picks up his second. He goes to the bench, and that means Chamwa Chachua is back into guard McCormick. Wilson off to Garrett. Wilson again. And another Baylor foul. Looks like it's vital as we step aside for immediate timeout. When we come back, a look at the incredible rebuild that has been done here in Waco. Wilmot. The preseason pick to win the Big 12, undefeated on the year. And this may be the best stat in college basketball right now, Jay. We mentioned ranked in two games before Drew got here. This is the 254th game under Drew that they have been ranked. It's really a remarkable transformation of a program. And, you know, you, you were very kind to say things weren't all rosy when he got here. Th this was probably the hardest rebuild in college basketball history yeah. when Scott Drew took this program over. Christian Brown with the shot clock running down hits a deep one. Well, they can get that shot any time down. <laughs> that, thing, that thing was 40 feet. <laughs> and Kansas trying to crawl back into it. A big three from Brown. Jared De Butler off to a great start for Baylor. He's got nine points already. But Davion Mitchell, when he drives, he does not tiptoe. He drives hard. He makes you come over and help. Team for three. In and out, battle for the rebound, and Jalen Wilson wins it for the Jayhawks. Jalen Wilson is the top rebounder for Kansas, averaging about eight a game. Harris, the backup point guard in there along with Garrett. Harris does not look to score very often as McCormick is surrounded and could not handle the entry pass. Nice low pass. Wide open. Wow. That's just big time. Davion Mitchell leads this team in assists, number one in the Big 12 in assists, right there in steals. I mean, he, he's another complete guard. They are not letting Kansas go middle, driving right into help. Jared can't finish. McCormick comes up with it. Physical game. They play on. Brown's open, and his second three in a row. Any time that he can get a standstill three, he can drill it. And you know that Baylor in the scouting report wants to make Christian Brown put the ball in the deck. He's had two huge games this year, 30 points against St. Joe's, and then six threes and 22 points in late December against West Virginia. So if he's open, he is capable. Oh, he's really capable as a shooter. Because I think most scouting reports, this is a scramble situation, and... Davion Mitchell had fallen down and wasn't able to orient himself quick enough to get out to Christian Brown to make him a dribbler instead of a standstill shooter. Good job guarding that fade screen over the top. McCormick way too strong in a 16-footer. Baylor ball. And Butler went in there looking for the third foul on McCormick. Oh. Harris tried to slam it home at the other end and had it knocked away. What an amazing block by Mark Vidal. A finalist last year for the Naismith Defensive Player of the Year award that was won by Marcus Garrett. I mean, Devon Harris is out in front. He just slowed down. You got to get to the rim quicker. And Mark Vidal took a, a clear basket away from Harris. What a great block. Vidal's already got a bucket. Five rebounds, an assist, and a block in this game. T cannot shake Harris. Now he does. Stumbling a bit, but he knocks it down anyway. Chamwa Chachua set so many screens at different angles. Didn't make contact all that much, but just was a pest and able to move his feet to get out of the way when he might be setting a moving screen. McCormick over Chama Chachua, around and out. And every day John, as he is known, comes down with a rebound. What a hard worker. Great pass there. How 
good are they, Jay? How good is this team? That pass fake got the defender to move without Davion Mitchell having to move. And as a result, just with a pass fake, got a wide open three. That's just beautiful. Talent, experience, toughness. <laughs> it's going to be hard to wrestle that award away from Garza as great as he's been. But Jared Butler has been fantastic all season long at both ends of the floor. He's in the top five in scoring in the Big 12. Leads the league in steals. Third in assists. Makes so many plays, both on offense and defense. You talk about a go-to guy. You can put the ball in his hands, and he's going to go get you a shot, and it's going to be a good one. Harris trying to keep possession, and then a foul is called on Butler, and you can see from the look on his face how he feels about that call. Bill Self's going to make a change. Try to get somebody else in there who can maybe ignite the offense a little bit. It started with Harris slipping. And the foul somewhere in there as Butler went trying to grab the ball. Yeah, that's a tough call because Harris had possession of the ball. And the ball was knocked away from him. If it would have been just tied up, I don't think you would have seen a foul call. That, that was a rough one to the fifth one. And it's a big one. It's a second on Butler. He goes to the bench. Tristan and Aruna into the game for the first time for Kansas, number 13. Sophomore from the Netherlands who's been playing more lately and playing pretty well lately as McCormick turns it over. Look how quickly every day John got to the other end of the floor. T. Chamwa Chachua. Beautiful pass by Macy O.T. These, all these guys look for each other. It's a poor job in transition defense, though. They didn't find Christian Brown. Now he's confident. He's seen three of them go in. That one at the end of the shot clock and then two off essentially broken plays. Over the top, Vital couldn't finish, and then he reaches in and fouls Brown. It was like five to one in fouls. Kansas had five, and Baylor had one. And, man, they've been fouling like crazy ever since. You can argue with one or, you know, maybe one. But the rest of them have been fouls. And now they're over the limit. So Kansas will be shooting free throws the rest of the way on any common foul. And Butler, their best player, is sitting on the bench with two. So Christian Brown hot tonight with three threes. We mentioned he's had a couple of really big games this year. Other games in which he's been contained. He's got their last nine points on those three threes. And make it their last ten. They need to get some offense out of Abaji, out of McCormick, out of Wilson. Those three players have combined for only five points tonight. And Brown, if he's knocking shots down, then when he catches it, you have to get up on him, and he can drive it. We'll talk about a good matchup here, Mitchell and Garrett. Mitchell tried to throw it between the legs of McCormick, but it hit him in the knee, and Brown misses the runner at the other end. Got wrong-footed going up for it. That just looks like they're in the almost a little triangle, too. Saved. What a great job. Both Meyer and Teague. I think it was Teague who kept it in bounds. With their awareness. Man-to-man -man now. The crowd appreciating the effort. Again, about 2,300 fans here tonight at the Farrell Center. Low Thamba. He's having himself a big half. That's seven for Thamba, who averages 3.8 on the season. Plays about 15 minutes a game. Good rebounder. And he's just finishing so much better this year. Pretty nice combo at the five spot for Baylor with Thamba and Shamwa Chachua as Garrett lays it in for his first points of the night. Yeah, Thamba just got caught on the high side of the post, couldn't get around to stop that drive. You know, Baylor's going to send everything down to the baseline. They don't want any drive going middle. Flagler getting more minutes with Butler on the bench. Great job to draw the foul by T. Tip off the weekend with the first game of our NBA Friday doubleheader. It'll be the Celtics and Sixers, 30 Eastern Friday night on ESPN. Saturday primetime, Duke at Louisville.
One of the many, many games you can see on ESPN and ESPN2 all Saturday. That one comes your way at 4 o'clock. And then UFC 257 on ESPN+. Plus. Conor McGregor is back. Squaring off against Dustin Poirier, the number two lightweight contender in the main event. Winner gets Mark Vidal. It's a rematch. Yeah, Mark Vidal could take them both on at the same time, I think. 12-point lead for the Bears. They have led the entire way. And Aruna. Wilson. Boy, he just got forced further away from the bucket than he wanted. McCormick can't finish it. Baylor ball. The Kansas just settled a ball screen right at the elbow. One elbow screening for the other elbow. Floater will go for T. How pretty was that? He just stop short so that you don't draw the charge. His mid-range game is so good. We mentioned they're number one in the country in defensive efficiency. They're number four in the country in offensive efficiency. Sometimes their offense doesn't get the credit it deserves. Good job to drive middle, and you can't let that happen. But that was a really nice play. He's got, Teague has got such a good shot fake. And you know, we mentioned his mid-range game. He's a good cutter, just automatic from the free throw line if you foul him. Misses the first as McCormick hits back to the bench. Lightfoot returns for the Jayhawks. One of two for Garrett. Still a 13 point lead for Baylor. Their guards have been great. Butler's been terrific, but the big guys are doing a great job as well. Baylor's out rebounding Kansas. They're outscoring them in the paint by a wide margin. Got that shot fake again. Tipped back out by Chamo Chachua, and it gets Baylor another possession. Meyer. Kansas ball. Kansas has to find a way to get out and transition because if they're going to play five on five in the half court against Baylor, it's going to be hard to find buckets. You have to play ahead of this defense. Not quite the transition team they've been in recent years, would you say? Not not yeah. quite as much, no. They don't force quite as many turnovers. And you know, In order to get out in transition, you got to either get a rebound outlet it quickly, but you got to turn them over. Kansas is good defensively. I think it's a good basketball team on the defensive end. But you have to generate some easier baskets. A pass under the basket. And it's Baylor Ball, another Kansas turnover. It's almost like that pass was an afterthought. The defense saw it coming every bit as much as Brown did underneath. Butler back in with a couple of fouls. And still feeling it. Butler with 15. You cannot go under any screens on him. He's just toying with Kansas behind the shoot behinds on, on ball screens. Really impressive by Jared Butler. The Bears shooting over 50. Greenberg, why these guys believe Florida State's an Elite Eight team. Uh, Kansas down by 16. What advice would you give them? When you're playing against an elite-level defensive team, you've got to get out in transition, get some early ones on misses and makes. Uh, you know, Baylor doesn't have point guards or two guards. They have ball guards, guys that can score it and make plays, and they got really good ball guards. I'm really disappointed. I, I, thought, I thought the answer was going to be recruit. <laughs> They got really good guards. They got four of them. And they've all played well tonight. Lightfoot with a jump hook. Fifth year senior. Only plays about eight, nine minutes a game. Redshirted last year because they had so much depth up front. But a very reliable, experienced player for Bill Self. I've heard opposing coaches in the Big 12 when they're given scouting reports. They always talk about Mitch Lightfoot. They say he's a respected player in this league. you got to outwork him. Well, a guy who works as hard as Lightfoot, Jonathan Chamwa Chachua. The difference is with someone with the ability level of Chamwa Chachua, when, when he works like that, I mean, it is you can't take your eyes off him. 
Right now, you can't take your eyes off of Christian Brown. He's got four threes in this game. I know it drives coaching staffs crazy when they give a scouting report that he you cannot allow him to shoot it from the catch spot. And then he gets four standstill threes. Butler somehow got by two defenders and softly laid it in. He only had seven points against Texas Tech, even though the two threes he hit at the end of the game were as big as any bucket scored in that game. But he's not going to have two substandard for him games in a row. What a beautiful back cut by Brown. He's wide open. Yeah, they had him, but Lightfoot didn't anticipate it. Brown taking advantage of how he's getting face guarded after making all those threes. Nice pass. Lightfoot from the baseline. Not there. It's too much, not a good enough use of the dribble by Kansas. They got to get downhill and, and draw help with their dribble. Rebound down to the Jayhawks. Jalen Wilson, who comes into the game for Kansas, scoring almost 14 points per game, has not scored yet in this one. 0 for 3. Well, he's got to be more active as a cutter. You know, one of the things, especially with young players, they wait till they catch it and then they want to make a move instead of being more active and moving without the ball. And his last two games have been quiet by his standards as well coming into this one. Well, he's been scouted as well. You know, he was leading Kansas in scoring for a good part of the year. Still their leading rebounder. Three subs in off the bench out of the whistle for Baylor. Garrett no out of bounds. Still Kansas ball. The shot did not hit the rim. So seven on the shot clock. Wilson trying to get people's attention a little bit easier now with not nearly as many people in the building as they normally are. Although this is the loudest building I've been in all year. Light foot no. Rebound vital. Is sixth on the night. What a step back by Mitchell. His dribble moves are violent. Violent in a good way. I mean, you are really having to guard that and you get going one direction, he changes his gun. Offensive foul, Lightfoot taking the charge. Well, you're not going to be able to drive all the way to the bucket right down the middle without passes being made. I've never seen a player lose a sock and a shoe. How do you lose a sock? That's how quick Flagler is. <laughs> he stepped right out of his sock. What, what do you think the official's thinking when he's looking at that going, come on, man. The shoe gone. The shoe. He must have taken it off himself for better traction after he lost the shoe. Wouldn't it be just as quick to put the shoe back on? <laughs> Like a golfer that hits the ball in the water takes his shoes and socks off to go for the next next shot. Wilson with a runner, and there are his first points of the night. Really good job attacking off the dribble. Largest lead was 16. It's 13 right now for the Bears in the final 30 seconds of the first half. Kansas needs to get a stop and a score here. Cut this lead down just even to 10 or 11. Then you'll feel a lot better about yourself going into halftime and stopping the score. Gotta get a shot off, and they won't. There's the stop. Now can they follow it up with a score? Well, Kansas looked like they may get run out of the building, but they really fought back. Christian Brown, a big reason with his threes. Four for four from out there. 14 points on the night. Jared Butler leads all scores with 17. Let's see what Kansas draws up here in the closing seconds. A drive by Garrett. And Aruna for three. Long rebound. Good if it goes, or will it count? They're going to have a look at it. With the naked eye, I don't know about you, Jay. I thought he got it off in time. I thought it was good. Yeah, but they're going to have a look at it. The official did too. The official said it was good. Now they have to go over and check it to make sure. So at the moment, let's say that it counted. 
for Mitch Lightfoot and the Jayhawks. You take another look. And well, he didn't, not gonna didn't get it off against Texas Tech where he wasn't what he would consider his best. He came out and showed his best in the first half against Kansas. Ready now for the second half of our Sonic Blockbuster. Baylor leading 41 to 28. Trying to stay undefeated, the number two ranked team in the nation, of course, all season long. Jay, as you well know, it's been Gonzaga one, Baylor two. There's been a lot of movement underneath that from three on down. And you've talked about this on a number of the games that we've done. You felt from the outset, really, there are those two teams, and then there's a bit of a separation between them and everybody else. That's the way I see it. There's a long way to go. And boy, that was a huge bucket for Ochai Abadji. He only had three points in that first half. And you could tell Bill Self wanted to run something for him to get him started, because if he's only going to score three and a half, there's no way Kansas is going to win on the road. Yeah, I do, I do think, Dan, to your point, that, that Kansas and Bay, or excuse me, uh, Gonzaga and Baylor are a cut above. Mitchell. And the rebound to Brown. So a good first minute here in the second half for Kansas. Villanova sitting in the three spot. Kansas dropped from six to nine. We thought Michigan might go up to four, maybe even three when the poll came out. But of course, on Saturday, they lost in Minnesota. So they are at seven right now. But so many teams are losing. I mean, even so many of the top ten teams are going one and one in a given week. And meanwhile, number three on David McCormick. Yeah, and that's just an awful call. That was a flop. You know, the officials have to officiate what's, what is enough contact to make a person fall down and what's not. And all you have to do in college basketball is fall down when you get a try. What a move. Jared Butler again. He's got 19. Just a little, almost a hesitation move. He just put Christian Brown to sleep, thought he was going to take the ball out top. And then blew right past him on the baseline. Just a beautiful move. McCormick guarded by Thamba. The kick. Abachi wide open. His second three of the second half. And McCormick does a really good job of passing out of the post and especially looking opposite. I mean, earlier in the season when they beat Creighton, it was not only the shot that Jalen Wilson hit basically to win the game was off of a pass by McCormick. You know, and it feels like more, and it's been as many as 16. It's only nine right now, and a pass through the legs of Vital turns it back over to the Jayhawks. Non handlers handling it. Good job by Mark Vital to pick up Flo Thamba. We had a little hesitation move, just blew right by. Just a gorgeous move. Basically put Brown to sleep. You can hear the fans making a little bit more noise right now here in the Waco. Trying to give their team a bit of a boost. 25% capacity in the building tonight. Wilson for three. Well, how big would that have been? Would have made it a six point game, but it's Baylor ball. On the weak side, when Kansas is running action, they're getting little pin-in screens, almost fade screens, to try to get some separation so they can get a three. And then you can attack a closeout. Lothamba had a great first half for Baylor. Three for three, seven points, four rebounds. Nice combination. Thamba and Chamo Chachua sharing time in the middle. Butler, why not? What a night for one of the best. You know, it's not like Baylor's weren't really running anything right now. It's almost like they've gone to you know, a little bit of isolation ball. And they're certainly going to the hot hand. I'm not really sure how much hotter Jared Butler's hand can be. Eight for ten from the field, five for six from three. How about Davion Mitchell just blowing up that action that Abadji was trying to get going? Out of bounds and back to Kansas despite a good effort from T. Even though it's a it's a 12 point spread here, and you know that that's Kansas in the game. It just doesn't feel like yeah. it, does it? It, feel, it feels like Baylor's in complete control. Absolutely, and, and it was nine when Wilson had a pretty good look at a three. Had that shot gone down, 
Might have really changed the tone of the game. Good cut by Garrett, and it'll go to make it a 10-point deficit for Kansas. So a really good cut. But this is where, you know, on the road, you have to get, you have to string a couple stops together. A couple stops, a couple scores, all of a sudden there's some game pressure on Baylor. And frankly, they haven't had a lot of game pressure on them. Teague around and out. Kansas won in this building last February. Baylor picked up its first ever win at Allen Fieldhouse last January. The Kansas win here snapped Baylor's 23-game winning streak last season. They have a foul before the shot going on Thamba. Timeout on the floor. Bears up 10. Would have been a one seed in the tournament last year. Would have had an outstanding chance to get to the final four. Maybe cut down the nets. And Jay, they're every bit as good and maybe better this season. Yeah, both these teams last year, really, really good inbounds play. Not well defended by Baylor. But both these teams, Kansas and Baylor, I thought had a, a legit shot. Not only get to the final four, but to win the whole thing. And you obviously felt bad for everybody. But, but especially these teams. And then I thought Florida State, San Diego State, and Dayton. Yeah. You know, Florida State, San Diego State, and Dayton, I thought, had arguably their, their best teams in the last 25 years. And that'll be an over and back. So all of a sudden, maybe not all of a sudden, but it, it is an, only an eight-point lead, and it's Kansas ball. I don't think I'll ever forget the game you and I did in Maui last year mm -hmm. between Dayton and Kansas. One of the best games you'll see, and Kansas had to play extremely well and won the game in overtime. Over Obi Toppin and, and Dayton, and the Flyers went on to have a fantastic season. Yeah, that was a spectacular game. Azubuki and Toppin were both fabulous. Oh, tipped away by Chamwa Chachua. Can't throw it high enough. And the big guy running the floor as he always does. The ball finds the most active player. And Jonathan Chamwa Chachua is the most active player. And my mouth hurts from saying that. <laughs> Runs like a deer, 38 and a half inch vertical, 7% body fat, and gives as good an effort as anybody you'll ever see. That would have created some noise in this building, even with just 25% capacity. Wilson, Vital didn't bite on the fake at all. Stayed right with him. McCormick double team. And Vital's got it. A lot of contact on the arms. Remember, Baylor and Gonzaga were supposed to play earlier this year. Again, beautiful basketball. Mitchell the three, Butler the assist. And Shamwa Chachua made that happen as well with the little drag screen and he rolls hard you got to pick up that roll and that means there's going to be a wide open shooter on the perimeter and McCormick just picked up his fourth foul they call him everyday John because he brings it at a high level every day the lob pass not many players are going to be able to have contact with the big guy and still be able to get up and take that pass away then he runs right down the floor and gets the stick back Born in Cameroon, as Jay mentioned, his nickname is Everyday John. Played at the NBA Global Academy in Australia. Spent a year at UNLV and then transferred, redshirted last year here in Waco. I don't know that any program in America, there are others in the same ballpark, but nobody's done much more with transfers and redshirts than Baylor has. And Chamwa Chachua has worked incredibly hard. You can read all kinds of stories. A great one in The Athletic today about all the time that he spends sometimes his light foot gets free for a jam sometimes jay working without a ball just working on footwork working on screens working on the quote unquote little things that will make his team and his teammates better yeah the key word working he's a, a tireless worker and baylor needs to run something on the offensive end they've taken a number of shots without making the defense work that's a little better just just the action they had out out front caused the Kansas defense to move a little bit. If they don't make the defense move, you're not going to get anything. You have to settle. And I know we're going to town on this, but it was a great seal by Chamwa Chachua that gave Flagler that open lane to the bucket. And he steps out to challenge that shot. That looks like a lot of arm there. And 
eventually the whistle blows and a foul on Mitchell. Mitch Lightfoot's given a nice lift to Kansas in there. And they've needed a lot of minutes from him because of the ongoing foul trouble for David McCormick. McCormick averaging 20 a game his last three. Just four points and two rebounds tonight because of all the foul trouble. And because he's being guarded by some really good guys in Tamba and Chamo Chaksa. It's hard to establish any kind of rhythm when you're out of the game with fouls. And three of them were, you know, you can't argue with that one charge call was ridiculous, but everything else was fine. I arcing three for Ochai Abaji. And again, as you just said, it feels like Baylor's on the verge of really just breaking it open, and then Kansas will make a shot, and it's down to ten. Well, Kansas is prideful. But it's a, it's one of those things where I think Baylor's got to run some better offense. You know, they, they have the lead, and they've done some really good things, but you're not going to shut out teams for a long period of, periods of time. They've got to continue to compete on the offensive end. Harris gets in deep, kicks it out for Anaruno. Offensive rebound, Lightfoot. Okay. Oh, oh, great steal. Yeah, Flagler playing free safety. Butler back to Flagler and one. That was a bad mistake by Kansas. And Baylor able to take it the other way. Kansas able to get a number of offensive rebounds because they shoot so many threes in those long rebounds. And Flagler with a good catch and finish to get fouled. Going to snake this screen to get past David McCormack. And Christian Braun feels like he's got to help out. And when he does, that leaves Davion Mitchell wide open for a standstill jumper. And that was made possible just because the excellent job that Jared Butler does in negotiating that ball screen. Doesn't just blast off it. Just handled it so well and attacked the secondary defender, the big guy, David McCormack, and created a shot for his teammate. Preseason first team All-American. And right now, Butler leading the Big 12 in steals. Third in assists, fifth in scoring. As Mitch Lightfoot continues to give Kansas good minutes off the bench. Well, his teammates are doing a good job of getting downhill. They're getting toward the basket and drawing help. And when that help comes over, they've... they've been able to spread the floor. Good steal by Abaji. He read that all the way. And he went up there with a vengeance. The foul called on Matthew Meyer. That was a meeting at the summit, wasn't it? Oh, just a lazy pass by Butler. Trying to make that cross for Almost like a defensive back. Abaji saw it all the way. Just read his eyes. Shot the gap and he was gone. And the reaction from the fans here in the building seems to suggest they thought that was a clean block. It was clearly a foul, but give Abaji a lot of credit. I mean, he was, he meant business. The guy who's shooting the three at a much higher clip this year than he did his first couple of years. He's up to 43% from three, almost 15 points per game. He's a terrific player. In the last seven games, he's making three threes a game. You know, he leads the Big 12, making about two and a half a game on the season. And as we've alluded to, for several minutes, it's felt like Kansas is a stop and a score away from making this one really interesting. They got another shot at it right here. Nice job by Anna Luna, but that really wasn't offense. That was just one-on-one -on -one and a lot of dribbling by Meyer. Light foot to Anaruna. Left hand, yes, and it is a seven-point game. Well, right now, Kansas getting into the middle of the lane. And that was about as easy a basket in the half court that Baylor's going to give up all year. Scott Drew wants a timeout. We got a game. Front of the rim, and how about good has Kansas been the last eight years following a Big 12 loss? So this means they have not lost two in a row in league play 
in eight years. Now, they lost last Monday to Oklahoma State. They were supposed to host Iowa State on Saturday, but that game was postponed due to COVID protocol, so they haven't played in a week. And now Abaji out of the ahead of the pack again. It's an 8-0 run for the Jayhawks, and they're within five. Well, the key phrase you just used was ahead of the pack, playing ahead of this Baylor defense. And Baylor has been loose with the ball. So they've been turning it over, taking some questionable shots. Over the top to Vital. What a feed from Butler. All that was set up with some false action out front. This little weave in order to loosen up that defense, get it to move around, then catch him with a back pick. Number two, Baylor. Number nine, Kansas here in Waco. The Bears have led wire to wire. But the Jayhawks putting up much more of a fight here in the second half. But then Abaji throws it away. There's those screens. And actually, it wasn't a back pick. It was just a... Two screens in a row. One by Vital and then by Chamwa Chachua. And able to get Mark Vital above the rim. Now they're really, they've lifted the offense now, give them more room to cut. Mitchell passed it up. Teague won't. Good Abaji. Yeah, and Abaji had his foot out of bounds when the ball hit him. Big night for Jared Butler, 22 points, six assists. Mitchell trying to turn the corner, has to kick it back out. Another ball screen from Chamo Chachua. Another three for Butler. Chamo Chachua is so good at running out, setting those screens. Even if he doesn't hit you, he requires you to go around him. And that's going to give a little bit of space to Butler, and that's all he needs, a little bit of space, and he blocks a shot of Marcus Garrett on the other end. His activity level is awesome. He is beloved within the program and by the fan base for the, the energy on the bench, the energy on the court, the selflessness. You can see why. I mean, yeah. you don't have to give him the ball. He goes and gets it anyway. And as inexperienced as he is, relatively speaking, really having only played for five years, maybe just scratching the surface, Jay? Yeah. T. Because his fakes are terrific. Plays with really good pace. It was down to five. Now it's back to 12. 7-0 run Bears. But Baji needs to shoot that. The big guy on him. Lightfoot will put up a three. Baylor ball. So the Bears can turn it on in a hurry, can't they? Yeah. Both ends of the floor. You like the offense? They're running a lot better the last few minutes. Yeah, there's movement. You know, it's not as much dribble. Chamwa Chachua as Lightfoot tried to take a charge. But the big fella banks it in. It's a 14-point lead. Timeout, Kansas. Boy, just, he is fun to watch, isn't he? Just the activity level of Chamwa Chacha is so impressive to watch. Challenges the shot, then faces up the drive. Wearing during warm-up tonight when they were shooting. Kansas players had a choice of any of five quotes. The Baylor players all wearing the same quote. And one of Dr. King's most famous statements from one of his most famous speeches is on the court tonight here in Waco. Among the coolest things I saw today was uh, at South Carolina, Asia Wilson got the, uh, another terrific steal. Asia Wilson had uh, her statue there's a statue of her now on the University of South Carolina campus, and she had said her grandmother wasn't allowed to walk across that campus, and now her granddaughter has a statue amazing. on the campus. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Yeah. It's so moving. Crowd did not like that foul as Abaji collided with Butler. A 
A 9-0 run right now for Baylor after Kansas had gotten it all the way down to a five-point game. Mitchell keeping the dribble alive. These two teams will meet again at Allen Fieldhouse right near the end of the regular season, February 27th. The Big 12 has left the last week of what typically is conference play open in an effort to have some room to reschedule postponed games. So as of now, it's the last regular season game for both schools, but that will in all likelihood change. But of course, true round robin in the Big 12, you've only got 10 teams. And everybody plays each other twice. And they're going to be a pile of games that have been postponed. They're going to have to be made up for the end of the yeah. season. And it, it seems unlikely all of them will happen. You know, we'll hope for the best. But yeah. Ochai Abadji made a really nice cut there. Mark Vidal between him and the basket. And then Chama Chachua comes over and just makes it near impossible to finish that play. It is so hard to score. On this Baylor team. I mean, heck, they held Texas Tech to 60. Well, you talked about postponed games and no basket there, the foul away from the ball. You talked about postponed games. I started to say a little bit earlier that Baylor Gonzaga, of course, were supposed to play, but COVID got in the way of that. Scott Drew, Mark Few, good friends, the two coaching staff staying in contact. Both coaches freely admit if they can reschedule that game, they are open to it. Now, conference games will take priority when it comes to rescheduling. But, but wouldn't it be awesome if somehow, some way, somewhere, Gonzaga and Baylor played in the regular season? It would be great. I just think you got to be mindful, especially Baylor, that you don't want to wear your team out as you get toward the end of conference play. Brown. What a big night for Christian Brown, his fifth three of the game. If he is not made to, to shoot on the move, he can absolutely drill it with his feet set. And that was not an easy shot. Butler a little bit strong, kept alive by Chamwa Chachua, and Garrett can't keep it in bounds. Brown's got that shot credibility, so when he gives a little fake, ball's going to come back out. He gives a little fake on a step back. Butler just flies by and with his feet set. And he just hits the bottom every time. Mitchell driving. McCormick playing with four. Not this time for Butler. And Garrett gets called for a foul. Tomorrow night, a Super Tuesday doubleheader on ESPN and the ESPN app. Number six, Tennessee is in Gainesville to take on the Gators at 7 o'clock Eastern time. And then at 9 o'clock, an ACC battle between Duke and Pitt from the Peterson Events Center. Both games also available on the app Duke falling out of the of the rankings today for the first time since 2016 here's how strange this year has been this is the first time this week that Duke and North Carolina have both been out of the rankings in the same week since December of 1982 the year after Michael Jordan left Carolina to go to the NBA. No, it was not. It was the year after Carolina won the national championship. Michael Jordan. I'm sorry, you're right. He won Michael it. Jordan sorry. was a sophomore. You're right. I'm sorry. He won it as a freshman. My mistake. My bad. That's a bad one. So he was on the team. He was on the team. And they were out of the rankings. Yeah, Sam Perkins was on the team. Well, how did that happen? I don't know. <laughs> it's impossible. Boy, forgive me. That is a bad mistake by me. It's, no, it uh, makes there, yeah. sense. I mean, yeah. I thought I thought Abaji stepped out there. You're right. He hit the shot as a freshman. Yeah, hit the shot two, as a freshman. And then stayed two more years. So Duke and Carolina both out of the rankings for the first time since 1982. Duke, Carolina, and Kentucky all out of the rankings for the first time since 1961. Turnaround by McCormick will go. But Kansas is just fighting. I mean, they are they are in this game. Got it down to seven. And in large part, it's been—it's not been because their offense has been so great. 
it's they've made it really difficult for Baylor to score. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by two losses in league play this year. Baylor, of course, is undefeated. If Bill Self's team has any you know, real hope of trying to win the conference title, I mean, they lose this one, and they are three back in the loss column. Baylor, again, they will meet again toward the end of the regular season at Allen Fieldhouse. Let's see if we got a big 340 ahead of us as Kansas continues to fight back into it. And they've got the ball back. Just tried to isolate Chamwa Chachua down in the low post. Eliminate weak side help, but just threw it too high and over him. He's trying to hold his defender. Boy, Taylor, Taylor's turnovers in the second half. Like it, this has not been a good offensive path for the Bears. You give credit to Kansas. Kansas' defense has been good. To your point, they turned it over ten times in the second half as Wilson slams it home and it's down to five again a couple of Baylor Bears fell down on that possession right now Kansas doing a good job of staying between Baylor and the bucket you know they've done this too without getting a whole lot out of McCormick because of the foul trouble they're going five out right now no true big guys in there and what a huge shot for guess who, Jared Butler, who's got 28 on the night, seven made three-pointers. Bill Self not happy that a charge wasn't called, and you know, Jalen Wilson had switched out. And Aruna fouled by Vital. Kansas drives, and they're using the dribble much better in this second half. It's not a great closeout. Because the ball moved, Kansas is able to attack those closeouts. And here's the... And it's odd that there was no call on that. I mean, and it makes you makes you think back to the, the call that they hung on David McCormack on that flop in the first, you know, in the first half. This doesn't make any sense. Or in se early in the second half, excuse me. This doesn't make any sense how this is officiated. And another foul on Vital. Probably just got that forearm on him there. Yeah. yeah. So six on each team here with 224 to go. And again, the crowd making more noise. 2,350 fans here at the Farrell Center in Waco. Wilson in and out. Lucio Teague did a good job of angling him out just a bit so he couldn't get a, a full on straight line drive to the basket. But a strong move. Jared Butler with 28, career highs 31, seven threes tonight, career highs eight. Chance for three for Macy O.T. Well, Macy O.T. doing it on both ends. First on the defensive end. Uh, just on this drive. Just angles out Wilson just a bit to make that shot more difficult. And there's the shot fake. And just got Garrett off balance with that little shot fake. And got the angle and the foul and the finish. Really good sequence by Macy O.T. 13 points tonight for Teague, and it's back to an 11-point lead now for the Bears with a minute 45 to go. How many guys have been like Macy O'Teague when they've been all Big South and all Big 12? Yeah. <laughs> got, got a chance to get all-conference recognition all four years of his career. Look, everybody on the Baylor starting lineup last year was all Big 12 and yeah. one thing or another, whether it's first, second, or third team or all defensive team. It is amazing. I don't know that that's happened before. Vital and honorable mention, all Big 12 and an all defensive team. Garrett back of the line. 
and you've done, you've watched and done a lot of Baylor games in the last couple of years. They appear to be, you know, you got some great players, and there's only one ball to go around. But they appear to be as connected and selfless as just about any team. Yeah, seeing. they they share it. Like, like the go-to guy is really the open man for them, which is a great way to play. I just thought after losing Freddie Gillespie, I I, I thought he was going to be missed a ton, and he has been missed. He he erased a lot of mistakes last year for this defense, and he could he could knock down a. You know, knock down a perimeter shot like a 12 15 footer yeah. around the foul line what a great story he was just big second in the g league draft and a guy that chamo chachua credits a lot for helping him learn the game more in his richard year last year everyday john dan shulman once in a while jay <laughs> <laughs> that might be giving me too much credit yeah only when he feels like it, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Sports Center coming up next with Bucci and Anderson. They'll take you inside the battle between Steph Curry and LeBron. Plus how Giannis and the Bucks handled the Nets with Harden and KD. And the latest on Patrick Mahomes' next step in his efforts to return for Sunday's AFC Championship game. John Bucci Gross, the only Sports Center anchor. Well, actually, the only guy I know that irons his golf shorts. It's like a hoop scoop for a sports center guy. Yeah. Right there. And a turnover. That says it all, doesn't it? And they're not going away, folks. They've got the highest ever... Highest ranked recruiting class in program history coming in next year. And a lot of these guys are going to be back. And, and you and I have talked about this off the air. Some of the guys here are obviously going to depart. But would it surprise you at all if Chamo Chachua became a bona fide double double star next year? If Flagler became a 15 point a game guy? If Meyer became a 15 point a game guy next year? I expect that. Yeah. And to your point on their on their recruiting class coming in. The two of their guys were in that St. James event that Paul Biancardi was on today. He does such a great job with our ESPN 100 and recruiting. Langston Love from Montverde Academy is a, a really good scorer. And then Kendall Brown uh, from Sunrise Christian. And Sunrise Christian's put out a ton of really good players over the years. Buddy Heald went there. Tom Tom Nairn from Michigan State. And Brown is a really good defender. Well, you hope it's nothing serious and the way you know he bent his foot you hope he's just working through a cramp right now that's the way it looks yeah, yeah. yeah. Just in that, that last sequence when we were obviously looking at what happened to Garrett, but it's so impressive to see Mitchell and how he can get up underneath you, stay in front of you. I mean, you know, Marcus Garrett was the National Defensive Player of the Year last year. Mark Vidal, a finalist, a semifinalist, Davion Mitchell. I think Davion Mitchell, I would put him as one of the top two or three candidates for the award so far this year. And one of the guys that I think should be right there, if not in the lead, is Eve Pons of, of Tennessee. You know, we often say something, you know, this guy can guard one through five. Eve Pons means it. He can guard one through five. He can guard one through eight. He can guard, <laughs> he can guard three guys coming off the bench. Yeah. You see Tennessee at Florida tomorrow night, 7 Eastern, as part of the Super Tuesday doubleheader here on ESPN. So Kansas will drop to four and three in league play. Baylor will remain undefeated, six and zero in the league, thirteen and zero overall. Hey. 
Final minute of regulation. You know, I don't think Baylor's not going to go undefeated on the season. Gonzaga probably won't either, although Gonzaga's got a better shot of it. But man, whoever beats Baylor is going to have to play a really good game. I mean, it's going to take a lot to beat these guys. Because they can beat you so many different ways yes. at both ends of the court. They got to stop doing that kind of thing. Yeah. And Harris will get a lay in for the game. Does that count as the announcer jinx when you're praising them and they <laughs> throw some crazy pass, give up a layup? But th this team is legit, and I think I actually think they're better than they, they were last year. Yeah, and they were they were outstanding last year. Well, they've added Flagler. Myers gotten better. Chamochachua gives them a different dimension. Well, that's be a great player as you mentioned. But fan base has kind of fallen in love with them the last few years too, haven't they? They should. Yeah. Tonight's player of the game brought to you by Phillips 66, the easiest call that we've had to make all night. Jared Butler, one point shy of his career high. A magnificent night. Seven for nine from three, 30 points in the game, and eight assists to go along with it. Well, it wasn't quite a perfect game, but it was near perfect. Had a couple of turnovers, but other than that, there's not a lot to complain about. Jared Butler was just fantastic. What a player, and what a bounce back. He only had seven points, which for him is is a, a poor night. He bounces back with 30. That's going to count. Chris Tehan, a walk-on, a senior from Leewood, Kansas, will bank home a three at the buzzer. Made somebody happy. <laughs> somebody was happy about you're, that. You're exactly right. 77-69, Baylor over Kansas after that late three. Another impressive win for the Bears. For Jay Billis and our entire ESPN crew here with the Waco and Dan Schulman. Thanks for watching. Sports Center is coming your way right now.